In this tutorial, we're going to demystify a subject that forms the basis for every great photograph ever taken. How the three elements of ISO, shutter speed and aperture all come together, not only technically to give the correct exposure, but also creatively to serve the photographer's vision. We call this combination the exposure triangle. When you get ready to take a photograph, a built-in light measuring device called a light meter decides how much light is needed to give you the correct exposure based on the ISO or sensitivity that you've chosen. By correct exposure, we mean the right amount of light reaching the sensor to allow you to faithfully recreate the scene in the photograph. The light meter suggests a combination of two points of the exposure triangle, a shutter speed and an f-stop. The total amount of light required is fixed, but the suggested combination of aperture and shutter speed is variable. So if you decide to change one, you need to compensate by adjusting the other. For example, you might use a combination of a large aperture, say f4, to let a lot of light in, but only for a very short time, say 2 50th of a second. Or you might choose a small aperture, say f16, which allows less light to enter. This means that the light will have to come in for a longer period of time to achieve the same exposure, say 15th of a second. In both cases, the same amount of light falls on the sensor, but in each case, the aperture shutter speed combination is different and delivers different creative outcomes. In photography, we always need to consider the creative implications of our shutter speed and aperture choices. A wide aperture of f4 will give us a very shallow depth of field with less in focus in front and behind our subject. While a smaller aperture of f16 will give a greater depth of field, meaning much more will be in focus in our picture. On the other hand, in a given photograph, the various effects of shutter speed may be more important than that of aperture. For example, we can choose a faster shutter speed such as 250th or 500th of a second which will freeze motion. Or alternatively, we can allow movement blur by choosing slower shutter speeds like 15th or 30th of a second. So when making a choice about the aperture shutter speed combination, we choose aperture as our priority when depth of field is the most creatively important element to us, or choose shutter speed as our priority when freezing or blurring of movement is most important. Now going back to the exposure triangle, don't forget that the aperture shutter speed combination is also linked to ISO. So if you can't achieve the aperture or shutter speed you're after for the effect you want, then changing your ISO will shift the range of combinations you can use. In the next tutorial, I'll talk you through the advanced creative modes of your EOS, where you can choose aperture or shutter speed and the camera will figure out the rest. Now don't worry too much if this is all a little bit confusing, because the more you practice and the more photographs you take, the clearer it will become.